to use the the triple C of conversions of Friedman in that. And the first is the, the geographical and societal convergence. Uh, you see that lots of companies are faced with changing uh, markets, certainly in cities, with a lot of migrants, a lot of other languages, cultures, and so on, and they try to adapt to that. But also societal convergence, where economic sectors become uh, intermix with societal challenges, and you, it's really difficult to say, yeah, this is a solely economic sector, and you see that they have to reach out to other organizations and companies, and then they ask us to, to find and uh, ask inspiration of social entrepreneurs to find ways to do so. Functional conversions, yeah, due to standardization, you see that there are a lot of products uh, are used for different sorts of services. Uh, copier uh, becomes also a printer and so forth, but also a mobile phone. You can take pictures and so on. And you see that companies are really faced how they can have a social license to operate such a tool. And they ask uh, also, they think that social entrepreneurs have an answer on that. And uh, thirdly, and that's, that's also, uh, um, is that yeah, the shift of vertical business models to horizontal business models to convergence, you see that a lot of companies think that social entrepreneurs have uh, an advantage, uh, they have already a history uh, to think along these lines, uh, how to bring uh, really to connect end users with their production or with their innovation uh, divisions, uh, to how to connect that is, 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 is a certain pair. And then, so you have these opportunity seekers, opportunity seekers, the globalization group, and the last group is that companies who really are looking for to strengthen their innovation capability. Uh, you saw that a lot of social entrepreneurs are used to work in a collaborative way. Well, a lot of companies are faced, uh, they, they know they have to work in open innovation, and it's really nice to, to have that in your presentation, but to actu actually do it, uh, they, they are really facing with a lot of challenges, and uh, we see that uh, a lot of companies are, are asking that sort of knowledge. Those are the three groups that are coming forward. Very much. Um, well, I'm going to take a, being an academic, I'm going to approach it uh, from an academic's point of view rather than a practitioner's point of view or policy point of view. And try, I just, just on the train, tried to bring a few first principle ideas to bear so that one could uh, start generating predictions for future research. And so I, was, I started actually with the most obvious question, which is what do we mean by service sector com competitiveness? And to cut what could be a very long story short, it seemed to me that one could identify three elements to that. One would relate to cost, which would be driven by technology and productivity. A second, especially in services, would be the differentiation of the products, the willingness of people to pay uh, for products because they're different to other products in various ways. And so... Um, that seemed to be important. And then lastly, uh, and the first two we've sort of picked up a little bit in our discussions already about innovation. The third we haven't picked up terribly much at all. I mean, the difference it seems to me between service sector and a production, uh, manufacturing sector is to do with the absence, essentially, of scale economies, or much weaker to get scale economies and efficiencies of, in supply chain and the other type of things that go with manufacturing. And what that means is that actually things like the attitudes of of the personnel, of the staff, uh, towards uh, innovation, towards production and towards the actual selling becomes very, very important within a service sector, perhaps much more than would be the case uh, in a manufacturing sector. So anyway, with those three first principles, I then start to think to myself, well, if we're thinking about social entrepreneurship, how might it play an important role? Well, I think the first thing is... is to say that I think social entrepreneurship in a way could be seen uh, like an extension of entrepreneurship itself. I mean, I think there's some work beginning to emerge that sort of suggests that in societies which are very homogeneous, I mean, one might think of, say, Japan, um, um, very homogeneous societies, very traditional in form, um, levels of entrepreneurship in general are quite low. And this goes back to 
work 100, 150 years ago by, by Weber that suggested entrepreneurs themselves are outsiders to society. If a society in some sense is homogeneous, doesn't really have outsiders, people don't, so to speak, socially need to prove themselves through mechanisms of, um, through mechanisms of, like entrepreneurship. And then social entrepreneurship, in some sense, is a further extension of this notion of diversity of the society and the way that people uh, with diverse objectives and opinions uh, can seek to influence the society. So, okay, that as a, as a starting point, we heard this afternoon, it was I think the most striking thing in, the, in this study that I've, uh, so far that I've heard, is that there is some evidence that, well, that entrepreneurial organisations are more innovative or can be more interested in existing organisations, I think, is, has been well argued. It's quite interesting that the evidence seems to suggest that social entrepreneurial organisations can be more innovative than even regular entrepreneurial organisations. And that's a very interesting phenomenon. And I think that's something that really needs to be built into. It doesn't necessarily, of course, immediately translate into anything. Right? For that to be translated into something, you've got to have mechanisms, essentially, for the diffusion of the innovation. And we heard in some of the presentations uh, previously, exactly, I mean, I prepare indeed is set up, it seems to me, in part, to try and achieve that sort of diffusion uh, or that interrelationship. And I think it is important to, to see entre social entrepreneurs as being entrepreneurs in... They're not the same as commercial entrepreneurs, but they have many of the same characteristics. I mean, I think that was very much very clear in Uta's presentation about values, uh, where she concentrated on there was a difference, so to speak, between the attitude towards society and the attitude towards power. And that's true, but if you'd looked at that s spider chart, you would have seen that they're very similar indeed in terms of their attitude towards uh, ambition and self-achievement. So, so it's that mix that I think is very important. And I think, well, what I'm trying to say... So my first point is I think social entrepreneurship is very Im important in that first area that I mentioned of productivity and innovation. Um, but there's a lot more work to be done, I think, to try and pin down the relationship between the higher rates of innovation in social entrepreneurial firms and how that disseminates through. Just very quickly, I've spent too long on this, on my other two things, my other two points... Coming back to my diversity point, social entrepreneurs, because in some sense they're even further outside, even more uh, further outside the mainstream of commercial life than regular entrepreneurs, let alone corporations, right, um, are likely to generate even more differentiated products. And that's, of course, what we just saw. On the, uh, in the various presentations and cases, creation of products that appealed, they just came at the market uh, from a different angle. But it's precisely, you don't forget, in, in the service industry, essentially, inputs and out, uh, value of input is the same as value of output. Um, this is not a manufacturing industry, and so differentiation is merely a, your productivity is generated by the price you can obtain to intents and purposes, and therefore the higher level of differentiation is very, very important in the generation of value. It's the same as the generation of value in a service sector. And so, um, and so that second area of differentiation seems to be very important. Well, I, as you can imagine, I'm going to go to my third one. It's also going to be very important too. Um, the sort of organisation which um, a social, uh, social enterprise is, in which um, the organisation... Uh, seeks to have uh, a value system or define itself around a value system with relation to society is, of course, very much the sort of organisation that is like to achieve very well in a service industry where the attitudes of the employees are of very great significance in the performance of the organisation itself. And in that sense, you know, social enterprises go back to, you know, uh, and indeed have been formed from 
um, organisations with a much longer historical route which have advantages within the service sector, like cooperatives, which also have a series of principles which relate to, not the same series of principles, but another a series of principles which relate to attitudes toward the work, towards the workforce, that then feed back in the behaviour of the organisation and the way that their consumers or customers view them. So I think these are areas... The first two, I think, Sir Lucy has already looked at. The third, perhaps, has not been explored yet. But I think there's quite a lot of areas in which one might expect social entrepreneurship to have quite an impact on uh, a competitiveness in the sector, particularly in the service sector, actually, much more so than within the manufacturing sector, given this set of arguments. Um, I'm going to be brief. Um, partly because I think I've already said something about this question in my uh, previous presentation. And so what I think is that if you look at social enterprises and their contribution to the competitiveness of Europe service industry, there are indeed several avenues. And the Seleuzi Avenue or the lead user avenue, avenue is certainly one to consider. But I want to repeat my previous point. I think also that social entrepreneurs should go their own way as well. And then I'm starting to think based on, and I think that the momentum is there. We know that the distinctive capabilities are present. We know that values are important as ever before and highly needed in economical activity, being an economist I think I can confirm that indeed we have been training people values which, well, if you expose them long enough to the, to the models, they start to believe that the world actually works like that. I think what we now see in a number of cases is that these models need serious rethinking. And there I think the momentum is there. What I do think that the role then should be also for social entrepreneurs is to be to become better entrepreneurs. So the potential is there, but I also see that there is a struggle, that there is competence development needed, and that, for instance, the whole issue of size, because a lot of these people are looking at size as something which might be bad or evil. I think that there we need to, to discuss and, and tackle issues. But my role would, or my suggestion would be like, be become better entrepreneurs without jeopardizing the social part of, of the concept. Okay, thank you for uh, the different perspectives. Um, would anyone like to add something? Yes, Domenico. Um, I was thinking it was not for adding the question answer. No, it, we can ask question. No, you can then ask questions I well. just uh, uh, want to ask a couple of questions with uh, so well-known experts. Uh, all the day, I heard two or three times that one of the advantage of social entrepreneur was to avoid the localization. I think that somebody said that in the room. Uh, in the presentation of our colleague from Enico, I heard that the idea is to become more independent. I think that, that was also in your slides. Then what is also taking into account the results from Seleuzi, what is the position of social entrepreneurs vis-à-vis globalization? That's not so clear for me if they are really playing the game, if they see that we are in a globalized world, or they are a sort of uh, anti-globalization. It's a basic question, but I'm sure that with all your interviews you can give me an evidence-based answer on the spirit of the social entrepreneur. Thank you so much. <laughs> So does anyone want to answer from the panel? At least I start with the last one, <laughs> with the, uh, the scaling of, of um, uh, social innovation and social enterprises, because it has been a topic that came up before. It is definitely a topic we would also need to consider uh, in Seleuci 2.0. Um, it's uh, not as straightforward um, as it sounds, so there is not one solution for all of them. It is true that we heard that there's a lot of money in scaling, a lot of um, philanthropic money, uh, a lot of also um, impact investment money is available for scaling. So in other words, if
if you um, promise to scale, you are more likely to receive access to finance. The issue is we know very, very little uh, under which conditions uh, it makes sense actually to, to scale. In other words, it very much depends on how you can standardize the particular model, the, the intervention that you offer. The more standardized you, uh, it is, the, the more uh, the